What's up, you beautiful, beautiful people of YouTube? Today embarks a new journey for all of us. The ones here on the show and the ones that will be on the show and the ones that are watching, mainly the ones that are watching. I changed the channel name to, wait for it, drum roll. Yeah, it was a failed drum roll. Um, bring in the bacon. I almost did bring it home to bacon, but somebody already had that channel, so I can't exactly steal it. They weren't a very high-end channel. But at the same time, I don't want to get it exactly the same. Anyway, point is, I changed it to bring in the, bring in the bacon, and that's bring in with an apostrophe at the end, no G at the end, D-A, bacon. And, of course, everybody knows how bacon's spelled. And I kind of wanted to go a uh, little bit of why I done that. And I think the main thing is, we all know that my channel name was Elmo's World. But, here's the issue. Even though I spelled it differently, I, and the FTC, the Federal, Federal Telecommunications Commission, uh, enacting that new COPPA, Children's Online Privacy Something Act. Mm -hmm. They really, really wanted to ensure that no kids are targeted. And being as the, the nickname Elmo is also relatively identical almost, except for the spelling, to the little furry red character all the children love on Sesame Street I fear that my future for this channel keeping that nickname on here would might incite that I'm targeting kids which is not the case I have three children of my own they do watch YouTube and I will you know it, it really scared me for all the other kids out there that has seen the Momo Challenge or the uh, the um, Tide Pod Challenge and, and other things. And I, I would never want that to happen to my kids. I don't want it to happen to any kids. But I really don't want it to happen to my kids. And so, first off, I, I just want to say I'm not bowing down. Um... This whole COPPA thing, it's going to take a lot of time to work out the, the details. Um, the FTC and YouTube are constantly, constantly working together to try to improve and stabilize this bill. And the, or the, It's actually a law now. Yeah, it's a law. And the reason why... It needs stability. Because right now, the only thing that YouTube has done above the scenes for this is when you upload a video now, you have to write on there uh, or choose whether or not it's made, it's made for kids. But here's, here's the deal with that. It, it doesn't always protect you if you say no. Like, say you have something on there that might be slightly provocative, you know, but you're doing a review on a, I don't know, a, a video game. YouTube literally could, at, right now, could go back and say that the, ki the, the video game was for a, an intended audience of younger years, so therefore... You are targeting kids. And there, there's just so many loopholes right now. So in order 
to try to keep myself out of that loophole. I decided to change the name and drop the nickname. It's going to be Bringing the Bacon with Nate and Tristan. And that's going to be when Tristan can be on. He's, unfortunately, he's not going to be here today uh, for this snack crate review. Uh, and it boils down to we work night shifts and anybody that's worked night shift finding finding a happy medium between in, between either wanting to sleep all day or you can't sleep at all. It's just, it's horrible. Um, so that's that. I wanted to get that out of the way. I don't want anybody to think I'm not happy with my nickname. Because I've had it, I had it for nine years, almost working at my last job, and, and that's where I got it. I just don't want anybody out there, especially in the social media world, thinking I'm using that nickname to try to lure kids because it's pronounced the same as the little furry red guy. And I also like to think I can do his voice. Not going to do that right now. My voice is hoarse. I can't do it right now. But, let's get on with the video. Alright, we're back. And, like I promised earlier, it's a snack crate review. It seems like no time that I done one just, it seems like what, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago? That's... The only downside I see to this box is be, is the fact that sometimes it takes them a week or two to get to your house. And sometimes I've gotten them literally a day or two before or after the payment came out for the next month. Uh, but that is because they want you to have the freshest snacks possible. These are not a, a sponsor, by the way. I'm just doing this because... I like this idea. I, I think sharing culture across the world is a great, great way to, um, I guess you could say, long distance fellowship, if if that makes any sense. Um, learning about other co cultures is always good. So they want you to have the freshest snacks possible. And in order to do that, they cannot keep a warehouse full of these at you know, like in the States. So they, they, as soon as your payment comes out, they start packing this thing and getting it ready. Now, like always, sirens. Ambulance, I think. Anyway, um, where was I? I literally forgot. ADD, man. It sucks. Uh, as always, I don't remember where these come from. Or I don't know. Um, they come from a different country every month. This box in particular, I got the Snack Crate Original Plan plus drink for $32 a month. And you're like, yeah, that's a lot. It is, but... At the same time, it's also an experience. You would probably pay $32 a month in other snacks. Well, maybe not that much. But just paying that little extra, knowing that you're getting something that's actually from another country. Actually from another country. Not just modeled to be after another country. Or from another country. It's a great deal. You should check them out, www.snackcrate.com. Like I said, not a sponsor. But we need to find out where this is from. I've got my house key, because I can always wake my wife up when I get home to let me in if it breaks. I'm always afraid I'm going to break a key. You see people breaking keys all the time. Not on tape, but just in general. There we go. Now, just before I open this, I do want to make a quick note that I will be taking a holiday break until 
the middle of January before I make another video. And the reason for that is I'm going to get the studio ready as much as I can. Uh, I'm going to start recording on there. Hopefully, uh, my co-host will be able to join me on a lot more episodes. And as this channel grows, he'll be on more. The more it grows, the more he'll be on. I'm sure just simply because by then we may have a routine going. And if I'm at the studio, I live like five minutes from where we work. And that's where my studio is going to be in my basement. So maybe he can come over maybe an hour or two early. We can get a video done. And then, because there's not only going to be food reviews. Not only going to be food reviews, it's going to be a lot more. All right, so let's open this and see where it's from. I always like to look at the, uh, I won't show my address, but it says Hedge, Nathaniel Stinson. That's my name. Uh, Hedge. I'm trying to think about where Hedge is from. Like, um, Ola showed one time, and it was from Spain, I think. So, let's look, open it up. Without further ado, Denmark. Denmark. You got your info booklet. Has all the information. Got some little facts about the country your snacks are from and everything. Always comes with this little um, thing saying you can get more snacks from Denmark if you want. Just visit the website and slash... The country of your choice. But it has to be a country they've recently done, I think. Bunch of little stickers. Like always. Now, let's get in here and see what these snacks are. So, I just ate. So, I didn't want to taint this review. Because, you know, if you're super hungry, stuff seems, seems to taste better. But it also, if you're t uh, too full, stuff kind of tastes bad. So I didn't want to taint it by being hungry or full. So I ate a little bit. Okay, starting off, we have something called Kim's Ostapops. Original. Cheese puff. That's what it is. Yeah. Literally a miniature cheese puff. Kind of tastes more natural, though. And you notice I say that in every video, but something tastes a little more natural. I think we need to change our food laws in this country. Alright, snack chips. Kim Snack Chips. Kim must be a popular person. Kim Snack Chips. Super Sprod. Of course, I can't read Den Denmark. Holland? No. What language do they speak? Dutch, maybe? Okay. These. Let's show it to y'all. They look like wheat fans. Or uh, cheese it grooves, like a wheat thin cheese it groove mix. And that's essentially what they. They're flavored, but it doesn't show anything on the package to reveal what flavor they are. Kind of smells like pizza. Like pizza e. I know what that flavor is. Those are good. Those are good too, but I'm not really a big fan of cheese puffs. I don't know what that is. Like, I know it, but I can't think of it. I don't know what it is. Those are good. Ooh. What I have been waiting for. Not really. I had no idea that this was coming. Ah. <sighs> Okay, as you know, my rule is that I try to get all the chips out of the way before I go to the sweet stuff, because you know the sweet stuff will stick in your teeth. But this, we have a combination of both. 
it is literally, literally bugles covered in chocolate. See? And they're big. They're big too. They look smaller on the package. Good chocolate, but what just happened in my mouth? What just happened in my mouth? It's like a crunchy chocolate. The chip almost completely disappears in flavor. No, those are good though. Really good chocolate. Yeah, really good chocolate. Sorry for the little skip there. Uh, last time I did one of these snack crates, it told me that I was reaching the video limit. And then my phone kept vibrating, as you probably heard. So I thought I might have been reaching that limit. I don't I mean, remember exactly how long it was. So I had to check it. So we're good now. We're good now. All right. Next, we have Skoom Banan. So, my anticipation of this and thoughts would be that it is a banana flavored treat or even maybe just a chocolate covered banana. We'll find out. There's two of them in here. You know, and if, if you make these snacks spread across the month, I mean, it, by the time you actually get the box, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> These are hard to open. They don't have the little perforated edges like the candy bars in America does. Even if this, if this is even a candy bar, I don't even know. Like I said, it could be a chocolate covered banana. Oh, no, it's but banana marshmallow. Yep. Oh, that's good. That's really good. It literally, literally, tastes like you took a banana Laffy Taffy, puffed some air into it so it ain't so chewy, and covered it in chocolate. I didn't know bananas covered in chocolate was such good, so good. Wow. I got the paper on that one. I promise, folks, I did eat earlier. I'm not that hungry. I don't eat the paper. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot of snacks in here. See, I still got that much left. Y'all can see that. Just smack myself in the face. I got limited space here. That's why I want to get in the studio as fast as possible. My seat's broke on the truck. I can't move it back. It's one of those electrical deals. Yeah. All right, these look like little toffees, and hopefully they're not as chewy as the last one. And if they are, I really am going to insert that little clip of 10 years later. Yeah. SpongeBob. Ow. Ow. It tastes good. This has been sitting out in my truck all night. I don't have time to chew that. <laughs> okay. Now we got something called... Oh, I think I heard a tooth. I heard something crack earlier. Really. I think that was a candy one. Maybe that too. Uh, we got something called Flipper. I sincerely hope this is not Dolphin. I think Dolphin shape, but not Dolphin. It looks... Mmm, fruity smelling. Um, I opened the package and got hit with a wave of fruit. It smells like strawberry. Looks uh, rather similar to the last one, except for maybe different flavor and it's not chocolate. Okay. It's good, but... It has a very strong flavor, but it takes a second to get there. Like at first, it feels like kind of like you're 
chewing styrofoam. But once that styrofoam starts to dissolve, or it may even be like a cornstarch that they put on the outside of it so it don't stick to everything. Once you get through that, you get to hit with this wave of strawberry fruit berry flavor. And the reason I say fruit berry because there are a couple berries that do taste the same. Strawberry and a couple others are almost close together. And I can't read the language that they write these in, so I have to assume that it's strawberry. Is that another one of them banana things? But that is actually really good. Just got to get through that first styrofoamy, tasty part. Okay. Super Flyers Strawberry Taste. I wrote that one in English. Can all these be in English? How do I get this one open? There it is. There it is. Ooh. Ooh, those look like those, uh... Sweet tart ropes. Whoa. No. The consistency of it reminded me so much. Of Pop Rocks and the taste reminded me so much of Pop Rocks. I really, really like this. The texture kind of hit me at first because I thought, well, this is going to be a chewy center like the Sweet Tart Ropes. No, it's it's actually like a uh, really coarsely ground pixie stick. See? Well, like a, I don't want to say taffy, but like a soft candy exterior. Really good, chewy. Mm. Feels like it's got some figs in there. But it says strawberry. Maybe it's like a strawberry roll up or the technical name for it now. Fruit leather. Okay. Gould Bear. Bar. Drawing Mandler flavor, whatever that is. I'm going to research and put it in the description what Denmark speaks. Ooh, divided. It means I can break one off. See, I like to take this back home and also share it with my family. And they like it too. A lot of it, especially my kids. They think it's neat. So, a little square. Looks like it's got little candies, little, little malt candies, like mini whopper, candy coated mini whoppers. Oh, hard. No. Yeah. No, it's not malt. It's like a. The crisp that they put in. Like for watching call it bars. Yeah. Still good though. Then we're just some good chocolate. Of course they are close to Germany. So maybe they, you know, over time migrated some flavors. Yankee. Yankee. Or Yankee. Whatever they said. Yankee original. I'm gonna break some of this off. There. Ooh. It is literally a Milky Way. Yeah. That's what it is. See? Caramel. That marshmallow stuff. With a little bit different flavor. More, uh... Less airy on that marshmallow filling. And more dense on the chocolate. You know, I'm going to do that last. Because I got one in here. I'm not a big fan of Kit Kats, and you can hate me for that. I, it doesn't bother me. But these are different flavor. It says Tom's Orange Stain. Or Orange Stone. So I'm hoping these have a totally different flavor than Kit Kats. And they may not even be Kit Kat, but just the fact that they come in this package, I assume that they are Kit Kat-like. And honestly, it just looks like orange chocolate. There's no filling. Just solid chocolate. 
Omaha. That takes me back. When I was a kid, well, kid, I said, but I was like 13, 14 years old. My stepmom introduced me to a chocolate orange. I had never had one before. And at this time, I think it was Cadbury that made them. I don't exactly remember the brand name, but they were the kind, they look like an orange, and you smacked them against the table, and it would break into like little orange wedges, but they were chocolate. And that's exactly what this tastes like, but I feel like it's a little more organic, so to speak, in the, in the fact that it has little bitty orange crystals, and I'm talking about candy crystals. All right. I don't know if I can get a close-up enough to do this, or I get it to focus, because my phone's in a mount, and the screen's covered. I don't know if I can... Yeah, there's a little bitty white specks in there. Now, whether that's it or not, I think it is. Or it's, it's not white, it's orange. So, yeah, it's like little orange candy crystals. So good. Takes me back. I don't think it's as as strong on the orange flavor as those was, but it's it's still really good. Okay. I noticed they like a lot of fruit flavors because even their chocolate is somewhat infused with some kind of fruit. So now we got this um, pitart, whatever that is, Franz nougat. Mid peanuts. I'm sure that means with peanuts. Ah, some marshmallow treat. Mm. Uh, I've got to start taking these in when I get them. I'll quit leaving them outside. Well, if I start doing the videos in the studio, I won't have to. The marshmallow in that literally has no purpose. Take it out and take it out now. All it does is it spreads the flavor out. There is no flavor in the marshmallow. Literally no flavor. It is literally like I am chewing flavorless gum. And then it carries the flavor of the peanuts and the chocolate and spreads it out. So it, you just literally... It's like you're chewing chocolate peanut taffy. That's what it's like. I don't... I don't understand it. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Our last and final item on the list is the drink. And that is cold. Bubble wrap. Okay. Now... I have heard, sorry, I have heard some of these drinks can taste kind of funky. You can check out the Snack Crate YouTube channel where they have like a little panel of people that does food reviews on these all the time. It's, it's hired by them though, like literally hired by them. They are in a studio at their corporation, I think, but... They did a lot of reviews on these, and I've seen some of them that just don't like the drinks. So I'm, I get really nervous when it comes to the drink, because drinks are not as easy to spit out. Like, usually you can, like, if you got something in your mouth you don't like it, you can take a wrapper, spit it back in it, whatever. But drinks, you can't really do that unless you've got a cup to put it in. And I really don't have a cup right now, so. Here we go, it's called Foxe Con Condi. 
it has energy. I don't know. That's probably just a uh, measurement of caffeine. I halfway expected it to be frozen, to be honest with you. I hope this ain't alcoholic. Shouldn't be. I don't think they're allowed to do that because they don't know who they're selling to. Like, they know they don't want to take a chance on a child getting hold of it, I guess. I can't tell what it smells like. My nose stopped up. Like, the very end of this, my nose stops up. <laughs> kind of smells like a Mountain Dew. From what I get out of it. It's like in between a Sprite, a Mountain Dew, and water. With a weird aftertaste. Once it goes all the way down, you get that weird aftertaste. But, I mean, it, it's drinkable. It's actually on the higher side of drinkable like i would i would probably drink it again if i had a choice between it and the last energy drink because the last energy drink give you an update on that it made me feel really weird really weird like my heart was racing and all this other stuff so i don't really know what was in it um and i, I don't want to say that's for everybody because you know i might have a sensitivity to caffeine that i don't know about and it may have a legal amount for their country but not a legal amount for our country so i don't know i can't base my judgment on the effects of the energy drink but also keep warned that energy drinks can be dangerous you hear a bit about people all the time their hearts explode because of them. energy drinks are something to be taken lightly anyway or a couple years ago there was a guy young teenager he's like I think 16 years old. He drank a what was it? A monster. I can't remember which drink it was. I know it was an energy drink, and I know it was a name brand new. Energy. A McDonald's coffee and a Mountain Dew that morning, and his heart exploded, and he passed away. So. Keep in mind, the caffeine stays in your system. But that's all for today. Uh, comment down below on what you think about the new channel name, um, the direction we're going with this, and the reason why I chose bringing the bacon was simply because, you know, that there's an old saying, bringing home the bacon, which, uh, you know, in term is like making the money, you know, to make a living. But also... I wanted to kind of fixate on the fact that I will be doing food reviews by bacon, you know, symbolizing food. But also, I wanted to to kind of, like, emphasize the whole thing as, like, a show that is going to have other things. Like, I'm going to be talking about uh, video game news, uh, talking about just about anything. I mean, maybe even pull up some... Pull up some guns and stuff like that and do and do shoots at into the hillside somewhere. I mean, my, my grandparents have got a place that I can go shoot at where all the bullets go straight into the ground. I mean, it's not... No, nobody's going to get hurt. We all know our weapon safety, so... It's good. It's good, and that's important. Train your kids about weapon safety so they fear the gun... So they only use it when they have to. Because that is... And I think... You know, I don't mean to get off subject here, but I think that's one of the things that's pushing this gun control scheme is simply the fact that people are not educated about guns. Like, back growing up, I went hunting with my grandpa a couple times. I think I remember one time... that I went with him where he actually got something. But it wasn't a deer, it was a squirrel. We went squirrel hunting. But we ate them. I've always been taught you don't kill for fun. You don't kill for the sport. And that if you do kill an animal that you don't implant it, implant, intend to eat, 
you give it to somebody that will. You know, you might want the, the antlers off of it, the head off of it, for a mount or whatever as a trophy. Give the meat to somebody that's going to eat it. Don't let it go to waste. Don't just don't just slaughter uh, for fun. I can't stand to see people do that. But also, when I went hunting with him, I seen firsthand what those guns can do. Knowing that it took an animal's life made the, I guess you could say, made the gun more sacred to me. And and that gun was a twenty two, and I know twenty two on a person may not do so much unless it was like point blank range, depending on where the, you're hit. But knowing that the, the calibers only go up from there, so we need to learn to respect the weapon. Not be afraid so much of it as, you know, you don't want to touch it, but fear it enough to know what it can do, but respect it enough to use it the way it should be used. But that's all for today. I don't want to get off into that, but like I said, like this video, comment on it, tell me what you think of the new name, um, subscribe, share it to all your friends and family, and... Peace, God bless, see y'all next time.